Bulginaka, do you know that cybercrime is becoming a growing problem in Fiji? Cybercrime is defined as a crime in which a computer is the object of the crime, such as hacking and spam. Cybercrime is also cyberbullying and using fake profiles to cause panic and spread false news. If you're involved in this or know anyone who's committing these crimes, report them immediately. I'm Polly. And I'm Peter. We host the Traffic Jam Show on City FM. From 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. every weekday. Do, do the, the right thing. Yanavanaka, Fiji. In this bulletin, Minister highlights potential of local livestock industry. NDMO team to leave for Kandabu today. And new Airbus A350 arrives next month. From the studios of FBC Suba, Edwin Nam. The livestock industry is important to Fiji as it can decrease importation of meat and dairy supplies handing over fencing materials to Western livestock farmers. At Lenga Lenga Station, Agriculture Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy says there is huge potential in the local livestock industry. Catherine Krishna reports. Encouraging farmers to work with his ministry to grow from their assistance, Minister Dr. Reddy says beef meat is the most expensive in China and Fiji is looking to tap into that market. Livestock industry is one where we have got to do a lot of work. Uh, as you know, we are importing uh, about 99% of the sheep meat we are importing in Fiji. Uh, about 60% uh, of beef is produced within Fiji, 40% is imported. 85% of daily products are imported in the country. So now you can see how important livestock sector to, is to us. Dr. Reddy says the livestock industry does not only benefit Fiji but farmers as well. One thing we need to do is to move farmers from the small semi subsistence farming to medium holding and large holding farming. To move farmers from uh, semi subsistence where they are you know, looking after one or two or three goats or sheep or uh, cattle, we will need to provide them with fencing material. We want to go big time into livestock farming. The minister also highlights they are looking into expanding the industry with plans already set for certain divisions. Entire western division and northern division we want to dedicate to livestock, rice, cash crop in the, in the western division, Daruka and pulses. In the northern division we want to look at livestock, pulses, dalo, cassava and Yamuna. The assistance is a grant of $140,000 that's assisting 134 smallholder farmers around Fiji. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. A joint assessment team led by National Disaster Management Office will be leaving for Kandavu today to conduct a risk assessment after a 5.7 magnitude earthquake hit on the 20th of this month. The report from the provincial administrator Kandavu confirmed there were no injuries or casualties, but the NDMO is still prioritizing a risk assessment for the safety of communities on the island. The team will provide psychosocial support and awareness to communities on what actions to take in case of a tsunami, earthquake or a landslide. NDMO Acting Director Litya Nambani Morama says the priority areas are Lomati, Talau, Talaulia, Nangai, Tawava and Ratu Eliki Memorial School. Bani Marama adds options are being explored for evacuation should the need arise. Long-term options for possible relocation will also be considered depending on the outcome of the assessment. The Fiji Roads Authority says it has nothing to do with the Land Transport Authority's request for photographs of potholes to be sent to the LTA. FPC News asked the, the FRA if the LTA request for the public to send pictures of potholes was a joint effort. FRA Chief Executive Jonathan Moore says they were unaware of the context of the issue raised by LTA. Moore says if the public wish to photograph any issue they find on the streets and highways, they are at liberty to do so. He suggested, however, that people direct their concerns to the FRA, not via the LTA, since road conditions are not an LTA responsibility. I'm not entirely sure how, the, uh, how it was uh, conveyed through LTA, but potholes are the responsibility of the FRA. If people find potholes, um, they should report them to the FRA. If they feel they, the photograph will help, then fine. That's no problem. But um, we do know where most of them are. We have teams out there going around, and we have regular inspections and, uh, and repair crews out there.
Domestic violence affects the productivity of the commercial and private sector. Minister for Economy, A.S. Said Kayum, says women contribute a lot to these sectors. Said Kayum adds it's imperative that women and those marginalized in our society are well looked after as their contribution is important to the economy. The bulk of the people who suffer from domestic violence in Fiji are women. And look at it purely from a commercial perspective. If the lady the night before has been bashed up at home, do you think she's going to turn up to work? Or if she does turn up to work, what will be her productive capacity? So it is a responsibility of everyone, in the commercial sector and the private sector, to ensure that we're able to look after those who are the minds of society. Fiji Airways' new Airbus A350-900 is expected to arrive next month. This was revealed by Prime Minister Voreng Mbani Marama while speaking to Fijians in Liverpool, Australia. Fiji Airways says the Airbus will be the first of its kind operated by an airline in the Pacific. The aircraft will feature 33 Collins Aerospace Super Diamond, fully life flat business class beds. Economy class has 301 seats ranked among the most comfortable in the market. There are 257 Airbus A350s in the skies around the world today, flown by 24 operators. The Fiji Cancer Society is urging Fijians to seek medical help as soon as they see changes in their body or if they start getting sick frequently. President Makarava Wilson says the number of cancer cases recorded in Fiji is shocking. Wilson says individuals know their bodies well and therefore need to see a doctor if they see any abnormal changes. He adds the numerous awareness programs will be useless if people disregard the signs and symptoms of cancer. You know, you're more familiar with your bodies than anybody else. Feel for lumps. Abnormalities in your body doesn't mean it's a cancer right away. It can be uh, diabetes, it could be some other NCD illness. But always go after your, to your doctors, your medical sis, uh, you know, fraternities to get checked. Coming up, Fiji 7s prepare for Oceania 7s. And BCF to investigate Joseph Quajo. Stay with us. Now we are going to be able to get a little bit of 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 Welcome back. National Sevens coach Gareth Baber is impressed with the new and young players who are in camp preparing for the Oceania Sevens. Baber says he will announce his side for the upcoming Oceania Sevens mid next week. 22 players are in camp and Baber says at this stage he knows who will make the Oceania Sevens squad. Senior players like Paula and Rani Sinikula and Kalione Nasoku didn't train with the team. Baber also revealed that national under-20 winger Oseana Tonga, who is part of the squad, has taken up an academic opportunity in Japan. However, Natonga's under-20 teammate Simone Kuruvoli was at training. You see Simi there, you see Anasa there as well, people like uh, Tevita Modios who have come in and you know they're learning and um, you know they know that they've got to do a whole heap of work to get to the standard that the boys who have represented Fiji over the last few years and indeed the legacy that Fiji rugby has to live to that standard is, is quite important for them. So um, yeah, it's good to have some young players in. I'm looking at a couple of players coming back from Drua as well, um, you know, like I have done previously. And again, what I want to do is see them in our training environment and see how they stack up against the players that are here. The Boxing Commission of Fiji will be discussing the unsportsmanlike behaviour of Joseph Kwajo after the Naliva fight. The Boxing Commission says they have more boxing programs coming up for fans and the Commission will not tolerate unsportsmanlike behaviour in the ring. Meanwhile, light heavyweight champion Savinanda Naliva came out firing against Kwajo to win the vacant title. Yeah, we will have to, we will have to talk about that because we cannot allow that kind. It's it's hooliganism inside the ring. I call it a tan tantrum, which is a very light term. This is basically it is hooliganism. This is not what you call uh, the the type of behaviour we expect in the noble sport. 
The All Blacks are still hurting after their Rugby World Cup exit in the semi-final against England. Players revealed how it will be hard to forget the defeat. England could be on the verge of dominating the world of rugby for some time with its current squad. Some former players have already revealed that the final was against the All Blacks. Heavy rain and thunderstorms are forecast for the Fiji group today. And that is your FPC Morning News. Remember to join us at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. For these stories and others, you can also tune in daily to our sister radio station, Cold FM. That's it from me for now. Have a good morning. Do you know that in 2018, there were 1,634 drug and substance abuse cases in PGK schools? Drug abuse is bad in our country in the U.S. We all have a responsibility to stop it. When are your children doing this? This is necessary to know. Report drug abuse. Hi, I'm Ashna. And I'm Ziyad. Listen to the best breakfast show. Weekly is 5.45 to 10 a.m. Listen to the best breakfast show.